Okay, let's now talk about individual types of storage. So there are three main technologies available, optical, magnetic, and solid state. I'm going to briefly give an overview of each one and then also evaluate them. So optical storage, first of all, examples of this technology include CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs. You all recognize just they all look the same, basically, just a disc, which is quite shiny. That shininess is related to the word optical, optical meaning light, because the way this works, the storage works, is by using different reflections of light to read the data. And if you're writing data, a laser is used to burn in kind of like holes in the disk surface. So that shiny reflection is part of how it works. So just a very quick overview. If you've got a disk like this, if I flipped this and looked at it side on, the disk is made up of kind of flat bits and also bumpy bits. So the flat bit, if it's trying to read data, a laser will shine a light downwards on the disc. If it gets reflected straight back up again, it can read, say, a binary one. All storage devices store data in binary, just zeros and ones. But if it's got a bumpy bit, called a pit, it will shine the laser down and maybe it gets reflected off at a weird angle. It can detect the difference and so can read the data stored on the disc. If we're trying to write data to a disc, a laser burns the hole just burns a little hole in the disk surface to represent say a zero. You don't need to know too much about that but in terms of evaluating it it's also important to consider that the disk itself is where the data is stored say your movie say your music but in terms of reading it you do need to have the laser and also writing it the laser which will be inside what we call a disk drive so one of these guys and you might have it in a console in a computer often laptops nowadays don't have any phones and tablets don't as far as I've never seen one which has one. And so you need to have one of these to use the data, to access the data stored on the disk, which is important to consider. Just the disk itself is not much use unless you've got a disk drive to read it or write to it. Okay, so let's evaluate optical storage, so CDs and so on. So they are pretty reliable. They don't just suddenly stop working for no reason. They are fairly durable, but as you'll know if you've ever used a CD and DVDs, they do get damaged fairly easily which makes them not durable especially regarding dust so that's why they have like a, a box to keep DVDs in so they don't get too dusty and also scratches will just ruin the disc because it can't reflect the light properly so they are durable to an extent you know if you drop a CD it's not going to smash but things like dust and scratches make it not so durable it is portable, they are, oh, they are portable I should say, they are easy to carry around although you do need a disk drive to work them. However, per unit, so per CD, the capacity is much, much smaller than alternatives we'll look at. So actually the size is not particularly big, you know, one Blu-ray disk might be 5 gigabytes, nothing too massive. And also when you, you know, if you buy say 20 disks, the price may be fairly good it may not be so bad per gigabyte but it's quite annoying to have to distribute your data over many discs you know if you're storing your entire movie collection you might have one movie on every single disc that is not ideal because you need to play around with loads of different discs and swap them out and so on so having a fairly small capacity per unit is not always great but the price is not awful however the speed is generally quite a lot less than alternatives so reading and writing from cds and dvds can take a while now optical storage is not used a ton in the modern world but magnetic storage is still used quite a lot so lots of different examples of this type of storage but the main one being hard disk drives hdds or just a hard disk and they can be mostly internal but also you can get external ones as well internal ones looking like this go inside a computer a big one like this will usually be a desktop computer or external plugged in via a USB stick, a USB port maybe. But going back in time, a cassette is also an example of a magnetic storage type. You may have never come across a cassette. They were sort of pre-CDs for storing music and audio books and so on. Also not really a storage device necessarily, but a swipe card you may get at a hotel instead of a key for your door. The black strip is using magnetic storage to contain the information about your which room you are allowed to access. For way they work is not really simple, so thankfully we don't have to go into too much detail, but data is written to a disk or a tape or a card by just changing magnetism on various areas of that surface. So like a 
compass is north, south, east and west, the different directions. It's a bit like changing from say north to west to represent some change in the data, a bit like that. And you can read the data by detecting the changes in magnetism from the default. So the main example, as I say, is hard disks, which are used in pretty much every computer, although maybe less so as we go forward. They use they they have disks inside. So if I take the case off this hard disk up here, we have usually a stack of different disks, which inside a computer spin at thousands of times per minute. So really, really fast, and we have a read-write head which can detect the change. So this disk is where the data is stored, different magnetism on various areas of the disk, and we can read it like that. So we have a spinning disk which creates noise and heat and makes it not particularly durable, as we can talk about when we evaluate it. But let's talk about what's good first. So for the same price, they have a very large capacity compared to other devices. So for not a ton of money, you can get a pretty big capacity, quite a big hard disk to use. They're also generally quite reliable, although failures can and do occur. So you may have had at some point your computer stopped working. It may well be because your hard disk has failed. And that can happen for various reasons, but the longer you have it, the more likely it is to stop working. But usually they are quite reliable. However, usually they're not portable, unless they are, say, an external hard disk, which is not too common and not a cassette. You're not really going to be able to move them around too easily. Also, they're generally not very durable. They can break very easily because it's just quite a thin spinning disk. If you drop a hard disk, it's likely to smash and not work at all. There are also now fast alternatives in the form of SSDs, but they are faster than CDs, for example. So let's look at this fast alternative then. So solid state storage is starting to replace hard disks, really, because they are faster. So the main type of solid state storage is a solid state drive, shortened to an SSD. Again, like hard disks, they can be both internal and external, but also, Working under this technology type, we also have other flash memory devices. So flash memory is kind of interchangeable with solid state storage. We have devices like USB memory sticks and SD cards, both of which are very portable and are external. If you have a phone or a tablet, the storage nowadays will be solid state storage, not magnetic. So the way these work is again, really, really complicated. But the key point is that unlike optical and magnetic storage, which have a spinning disc, usually, solid state drives have no moving parts. So inside, it's just a whole bunch of circuitry. There are no, this is just inside of a device. There are no spinning disks. It's just loads of circuits and no actual disk which is moving. Okay, so let's evaluate SSDs, which are really the most modern technology available at the moment. So they are generally quite reliable. They don't tend to stop working for no reason. They also can be very durable, so not easily broken because they have no moving parts. Because they're usually just a solid block of circuits, if you drop it, it doesn't really cause any damage. There is no disc being smashed, like there would be with a hard disc, say. So generally they're quite durable. It's why a USB stick you can kind of throw in your bag and not worry too much about. Likewise, they are portable. They're usually quite small because they're quite compact and can be moved very easily. The exception might be an internal SSD, which you can move easily, but you're not really going to go in your computer, take it out and move it around. These three are good, but the main reason they're used is because they are very fast compared to alternatives. So, I mean, a USB stick is not as fast as a hard disk, but then an SSD is, as, is faster than a hard disk because they're really the equivalent. A USB stick is not an equivalent of a hard disk. So we are generalizing here quite a lot, but SSDs are generally quite very fast, which means that your programs will open quicker you'll spend less time waiting for things to load, which is obviously good. But what's not so good is they are very expensive. So if you're getting the same capacity as magnetic, you're going to pay a lot more. Now this gap is closing because the technology is becoming more widespread, but still they are more expensive. Another issue which is getting better, but is still something worth considering, is that SSDs can only write so many times. So you can only save, say about 100,000 times on an SSD before it starts to not work. So it's got long-term reliability issues. Even if in the short term it is reliable, longer term you can only store so much data constantly because it starts to weaken and not work so well. 